My name is Chris Carlson. I'm one of the senior FAEs here at Altium. And in this episode, we're going to begin part one of a series on thermal management. This time, we will look at thermal conductivity through materials, and we will develop a thermal resistance concept. Then in part two, we will use that thermal resistance concept to properly size a heat sink for a component, as well as look at thermal transfer through printed circuit boards. What I have drawn here to my left is a model of um, a, convection, a convective heat transfer area. I have a solid material where we have a conduction model and another convective area. Q is the heat transfer rate through the entire system. T1 and T2 is the temperature differential across the system. And H1 is my um, my heat transfer coefficient for region one. H2 is the heat transfer coefficient for region two. K is my thermal conductivity of my solid material. A is the air surface area of my solid material. And S is the distance that the heat will transfer through the solid material. And we're going to look at the thermal um, stack up of the entire system. Now, we're all familiar with Ohm's law. I equals V over R. What that represents is a forcing function, voltage forcing current to go through a, th a electrical resistance. Okay, looks like I equals V over R electrical. Well, we have an equivalent concept in heat transfer where the heat transfer rate, Q, not unlike the charge transfer rate, I, through a thermal resistance, R theta, is, equal, um, is being driven by a temperature differential, okay? So, let's look at the thermal resistance of our first convective area. So, we'll start out with first principles. R theta is equal to delta T over Q, which is equal to delta T, our forcing function, over our heat transfer coefficient, H1. Uh, in this case, we'll keep it more general um, for starters. H times the area over delta T, which then is, simply, is simplified down to 1 over HA. Okay, and this is for our convective model. Then for our conduction model, we have R theta is equal to delta T over Q, which is equivalent to delta T over our thermal conductivity of our solid region, K, times the surface area, A, delta T, over the distance traveled through our solid material. And that algebraically reduces to our distance over Ka. All right, so for our entire system here, we have three um, thermal resistivities, one for region one, our convection model, our solid conductivity model, and then our second convective model. So in this case, R theta total is equal to 1 over H1A plus our distance through our solid material over Ka plus 1 over H2A. Now, the concept of Thermal resistance is very nice when we're looking at um, thermal management of electronic components because the manufacturers make it simple for us. They provide us these thermal resistance numbers in, in units of degrees C per watt. So for our system here, our heat transfer is the equivalent of our charge transfer. So we can represent that by a current source of value Q. So our heat transfer then is going to flow through our thermal resistances 
for our three regions. So we've got r theta, I'll call this region 1, 2, and 3, r theta 2, r theta 3. Now, if we think about this in terms of this being our system and then T2 being our ambient temperature, um, our temperature is equal to Q times R theta, right? So we can replace this with an equivalent voltage source representing ambient temperature. Call this T ambient. Now, there's one more piece to this model which we don't often consider. And that is that for each of these components, it does have a thermal mass, okay? And we can represent that by a parallel capacitor with each one of these elements. Now, we generally do not consider this when we're looking at the um, thermal management of components on a printed circuit board. However, if you're ever working with high pulsed power, high energy systems, you do have to consider this because the temperature um, through this R theta is going to go up with an e to the minus t over tau characteristic. However, for our purposes, we're going to ignore this for now. All right, well, I hope this sets the foundation for um, us actually cr doing some real world examples in part two. Again, we'll look at properly sizing a heat sink for an electronic component, as well as looking at the thermal transfer through a printed circuit board. If you have any questions about this topic, please respond in the comment section below. I'm Chris Carlson. Thanks for your time.